Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mary Gardner from Lap of Love, and today I've got my guest speaker that I've been super excited about, Dr. Julie Busby. And I just like saying your last name. <laughs> Thanks. So I don't know if you know this, but um, I I met you. I'm sure you don't remember me at all, but it was like seven or eight years ago at one of the largest conferences in veterinary medicine uh, called NABC back then. And you had your booth. And I, again, I think it was either 2012 or 13. And I was just, and I don't know if it was like your first booth or something, but it was back in the day, right? And uh, I remember going up to your booth and I'm like, what do you, what do you, what do you got there? And you were there, but there's thousands of people at this conference. So that's why I say you won't remember me because I was one of thousands coming up to your booth because of your awesome invention toe grips. And as a uh, weak and wobbly pet lover myself, and though many of those that are watching are also that way, I just am uh, in awe at what you created and am super excited to have you here. So you are the inventor of the toe grips. Yes, yeah, so let me begin by clarifying that because I love to give credit where credit is due. A brilliant client of mine actually came up with the idea and he's like just Leonardo da Vinci incarnate and he was not going to do anything with it. He has a zillion projects, irons in the fire. He's an artist. And I was so excited that my hair was standing up on end when he was showing me this concept. And he's like, Julie, if you think you can help dogs with it, go for it because like this is never leaving my kitchen. So I developed the product from an idea and I'm the biggest cheerleader, but I'm not really the inventor. Okay, all right, that, well, it's nice that you give credit. How long ago was that? So you're right, I did meet you in 2013. That was our big debut. And that was 2012, that was like our R&D year. Oh, so that's not very long at all for R&D. That's fantastic, okay, so this, awesome dude tells you his idea now are you like me and love the big weak wobbly spaghetti leg crusties lumpies you know it so my practice right now i mean years ago i owned my own practice and saw everything but right now for like the last decade i've just been doing chiropractic and acupuncture and so i see all those senior dogs that have you know mobility management issues and that's why I was so excited. I actually said to him, I'm like, I have been looking for this product my entire career. I just didn't know what it would look like because yeah. I could affect pain. I could affect mobility, but I couldn't stop them from slipping. That was a biomechanical issue. So that, yeah, was super exciting. So cool. Okay. So where, whereabouts do you live? We live on the coast of South Carolina between Savannah and Charleston. It's called Beaufort. Yes. Okay, listen, I lived in Myrtle Beach for a year and a half in the early days of my life, going to University of South Carolina. Um, so you now, I, I was just thinking about my dog, Sam. She has spinal lymphoma, so she's got very weak legs. Um, so she's got beautiful hips, wonderful hips, but she's got that, um, you know, neuropathy, right? Where she's where she's knuckling and toe dragging and and. Dr. Julie knows because I, you know, send her private messages probably way too often. <laughs> so we are not only a fan, but a consumer. So, um, all right. So tell me and everybody here, because I know these well, but I just love to understand also from the, from the start. So this guy's got this idea. And so what do you, what do yeah. you do? Do you get like rubber bands and. Yeah. So do you want to hear the crazy story? Cause it gets crazy. Perfect. Okay. Everybody wants to. All right. So he, he actually came to our open house at the Vita Hospital and he said, look what I did for Morgan, who was the senior dog that I had done some acupuncture on. And he pointed down to her toenails and he had put these bands on really to keep her quiet at night on their floor. So she probably had some level of doggy dementia and she was ticking around on the floors at night. But instantly I recognized like, oh crud, a dog's natural mechanism for traction is to engage their nails like soccer cleats works fine outside on turf, but it doesn't work on hard floors. So I'm like thinking of all these patients that I can help. And the poor guy was this massive introvert and I started texting him every day and I just wanted to help him. I wanted this for my patients and I wanted to help him any way I could like make this available. 
So, I mean, I think after about like the second week of receiving my daily text with ideas and brainstorms and I just wanted to support him. He's like, that's when he's like, Julie, please just take it and use it. If you think you can go with it, I'm thrilled. And so to this day, thankfully we're close friends and I love he and his wife who's a vet tech and um, they've been very supportive. So it has a happy ending. Um, but of course, finances are a concern. Like I remember saying to my husband and you know this cause you've done crazy, amazing projects and invented things and brought all kinds of businesses to life. But I was a naive veterinarian. What did I know? I just knew that this could help my patients. And so I said to my husband, I think we can do this for $2,000. So that was, you know, a multiple of many zeros after that of getting this thing all right. off the ground with lawyers and R and D and, you know, the whole technology piece. And so one of my clients, the one of the big pieces I wanted was the patent. And one of my clients, who, God bless her, she, I, she called me Julie girl, you know, here we are in the South, and she was so sweet, and this is the most fun story. She wanted to give me money to help me with this, and I, this was a huge risk. If this sunk, I wanted to only sink myself. I didn't want to take anybody with me. Just, I, I mean, I just really felt like, if this fails, I don't want to have to feel that, those feelings of, I, I let you down, and you know, I took your money in the process. So I consistently refused any sort of support. And I'm like, we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. And she just kept saying, I'd rather give you the money than the government. And so, and I saw her every week. She had two senior dogs, we were doing acupuncture. So one, one Sunday I came home from church and on my doorknob was a Verizon bag, like the kind of thing you get when you just brand, buy your brand new phone. It was just left on the doorknob because I wasn't home. And in it was $10,000 in cash in $20 bills. Stop it. That she just left because I wasn't there. So I knew what it was. South Carolina for you. That ain't happening in South Florida. (laughs) Yes, our quiet little neighborhood. So I immediately like, who, you know, who could this be from? So I immediately called her. I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, you wouldn't take it and you're taking it. And I'm so proud of you. And she was so sweet. So that was actually that conference that we were at in 2013. Um, that was, we had to, we came there in January and it was a last minute decision and it was expensive to get a booth yeah. and to, like to travel. People don't understand just to rent the space, then the back would drop and the manning it and like the hotels are so expensive. I mean, you probably went through half of that. Well, so that money was for the patent specifically, but the patent wasn't due until the money, the bill wasn't due till March. So I called her and I said, hey, I'd really love to go debut at this conference. Do you mind if I use the money and I'll make it back there and then I'll have it for March? And she's like, I trust you, whatever you wanna do. So seven volunteers came with me from the vet hospital that I work and some friends and family, everybody volunteered. My whole neighborhood was packaging up toe grips to get them out the door. We borrowed a TV, we borrowed a trailer. Like it was such an amazing barn raising story. Goosebumps, I love it. And we only had this like little, there were, when we bought our booth in December, there was like six booths left. Yeah, but I remember where we were. Well, it was a phenomenal spot actually because no! we ended up getting a double booth. They called me like three days before we were supposed to go and they said, hey, there's been a mix up and we actually double sold the spot you're supposed to be in. So is it okay if we give you a double booth for the same price? And I'm like, is this a trick question? So we had this amazing standalone spot and we get yep. down there and I very quickly realized that I'm in big trouble because all that people are doing is giving away chapstick and post-it notes and I need to sell $10,000 worth of toe grips to make back my patent money. So I'm like, oh my heavens, you know, I completely didn't know what I was doing. So um, it's a really an amazing story. We have all these little amazing, like just God pieces of the story. But on the last day we were short by like, 10 bucks and one of the volunteers who was there with me bought, I mean, he ne- I mean, I would have given him a lifetime of toe grips, but just because he knew that was the goal, the last, like before the bell rang, the closing bell, he bought a package of toe grips to put us like three cents over um, that $10,000 mark and we did it and it was a miracle. Oh my God, that is so cool. This is such a good story. Now, and I mean, I, I'm not, I remember your booth and everything, which is, which is crazy now, because I spoke at that conference and I'm always going down to look at what new products are out there. You know, I'm a huge harness lover. I've got, you know, my, my favorite harness out there and, and things like this. When I saw this, I'm like, what? 
and there's been booties and, and everything else, which, you know, every, uh, you know, dog may, may uh, utilize something differently. But I was like, how, how little, how ingenious. So now has it, has the original changed much to this one? So the concept of putting something on a dog's nails that had a specific, the word is durometer, a specific durometer to give them grip, that was the idea. And so we took it and we had to figure out sizing and you know the just the actual specifics for manufacturing it. And that's a whole nother crazy story. I ended up working with rescues all over the country to try to figure out how we size for specific dogs and um, just working so cool. with volunteers. And so that was, it was really a year because above all do no harm is our mantra, right? And I probably wouldn't even be selling tour groups for, to this day because I'm such a perfectionist, but I had this one client that would come like every three weeks for acupuncture and he was an entrepreneur and he's like, Julie, you just gotta sell these things, Julie. Come on, you gotta get out there, you gotta get to market. So thanks to Dave, we, after a year of R&D, we did launch there at, uh, at VMX and certainly a lot of learning curve and there's been some modifications, but for the most part, the concept of just allowing, um, enabling a dog's natural gripping mechanism, that fundamental concept has yeah. changed. Okay, so I want you to, I think you have a little foot model there to explain it. Now I got this thing that says your name across my little agenda and I'm trying to get rid of it. So make sure it's up higher than that. All right, here it is. All right, that's a little creepy, Julie, but tell us. All right, so it's a ceramic paw. Let me get this Wait, Go this way. Go right, thank yes. you. And the idea is that when a dog wants traction, they flex their paw, engage the toes, and the nails act like soccer cleats. So even normally healthy short nails, they can still reach down to the ground. And if you've ever seen a petrified dog standing in a waiting room, of a vet office on a slick floor, a lot of times they look like they're like up on their tippy toes because they're trying to engage that gripping mechanism that's not working for them. And so all we did was take the nail and just give it, it just turns out it doesn't take much. We just give it a little bit of grippiness now. So when they go right. through that motion, now, the yeah, the grip zone, we made up that word. <laughs> TM. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wait a minute. Let me get this straight for bio biomechanics or whatever. So even if the even if your dog's foot is on the ground and the toes aren't hitting it, just standing there, but but when they're trying to grip, they actually will kind of grip and then they will hit it. Yeah, so that's a great question, and the answer is maybe. So, okay. so I, I'm a I'm a fan of short nails in dogs. I really am. I have like this whole nail trimming course that I did. Like I really love it. However. 99% of American dogs have toenails that are fine for toe grips. And even if they're not in contact, when they need it, it's still enough to grip. But yeah. there are dogs that their nails are just too short, especially dogs on the hind end where they have been wearing them down because of a neuro condition. Yeah. And so in that case, it's not the right product for traction. It can actually do other interesting things, but it's not going to work for traction. Okay. Let's not go there yet because I want to go there. But let's first talk about, okay. So um, on your website, which let me see if I have my, if, if I've got the little website here. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. Let's see. Toegrips.com. <laughs> okay. So um, on your website, though, it talks about how to measure your, the dog's toenail, right? With, and, and figure out what size that you need. Because they look very similar sizes, but they're not. Yeah. So people say all the time you know, why don't you just send me some choices and I'll size? And the answer is because you're always gonna pick the one that's too big because it's the easiest to put on. Yes. These could be kind of like, almost like compression socks to try to put them on, right? Yeah. So, and I know you've got instructions. So by the way, so you, you sent me my two different sizes because I wanted to be able to show them and, you know, use them on Sam. But, um, and you've got in, in the packet that it comes, it talks about how to put them on. And uh, so you just basically soak them in some rubbing alcohol for just like a minute or two, right? It's, and then you push them on. They're, it's really not that hard. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm gonna demonstrate it, okay? Perfect. So the so it's not even really a soak. It's just that they're a little easier to apply wet because it kind of yeah. breaks the coefficient of friction. So you can apply them dry, but it's easier to apply them wet. And then it's easier to just have them all wet at once and take them out one at a time. 
And we use rubbing alcohol because it's clean and it easily evaporates and it doesn't damage the material. So it's just the best. I mean, you can technically use water or witch hazel or the inventor of toe grips, the first time he put on the prototype for one of my patients, he spat in it and put it on. I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna put that in the instructions. So we went with rubbing alcohol. Good to know, because that will be me. Okay, good. So essentially, the key is really to stabilize each toe as you apply, because if you don't and you're cranking on these old arthritic toes, it hurts, right? So I just put a thumb behind, mm. underneath the pad and on top, and kind of just keep the toe stabilized. And then I just take the wet toe grip. Wow, this is really, I am not good at it's this. It's hard to do this, people. They don't understand how hard it is, the camera. Yes, you're good. All right, and I just push it on as far as it'll go. That's, a, that's step one. Okay. And then step two is just taking my fingernails or fingertip and kind of working it up into place. Okay. So that on the bottom, it creates our grip zone TM. And on the top, it's just <laughs> back far. It's back far enough that it's not gonna just fall right off. So the vast majority of dogs just wear these, you mentioned compression socks, they're snug because they're just creating a friction seal and that's how they stay on it. And I like that, I mean, it's simple. It's now so there are there are times that we recommend gluing and we can talk about that when we- Somebody asked this. about glue, so why don't we just talk about glue because somebody asked. Yeah, so gluing is not our standard application um, for the average senior dog plodding through life, they should stay on just by the friction seal. Reasons they come off. Number one, they're sized incorrectly. You know, too big or too small, they'll fall off. Number two, the dog's too active. So they're not designed for three-year-old dogs who slip running around playing ball in the house. They're for senior dogs who are walkers and not runners. And number three, if a dog has what we call conscious proprioceptive deficits, and that means that they tend to drag or scuff their paws when they're walking, that motion, toe grips are super valuable for those dogs and we'll talk about it, but that motion tends to pop them off. And that's also a, an instance where we would glue. And so there's on our website, toegrips.com on the screen, there's four, you can do forward slash how to glue. So it's how hyphen to hyphen glue and all the instructions are there. Very cool. Okay, so somebody just asked, Amy asked, what about dogs that try to eat them? So that's our number one question. Like when we go to a trade show, everybody comes up and says, well, my dogs just chew these right off. And you just have to believe me, after however many years this is, seven, I can say with confidence, it's really uncommon. So of yeah. course it does sometimes happen, but like it is, of all the customer service tickets that we get in a day or a week, like it's pretty, un it's pretty rare. I mean, we might get a couple. The, yeah. the reason is if you, if you think about it, they're not covering the paw pads or soft tissue or skin. They're on those distal nail tips, which are poorly innervated. I mean, first of all, the quick doesn't even go all the way to the tip. And secondly, it's encased in this hard, you know, keratin tissue of the nail. So they really just don't even seem to notice them. If your dog does tend to bother with them, then we don't take the risk of them potentially chewing them off and having a problem. We have a money back guarantee, but also in these seven plus years, We've never had an issue with the dog chewing them off, ingesting them, and having some sort of a GI problem. So I'm thankful for that yeah. too. Very, very cool. Now, so I want to get to the to the to the neuropathy and the alternate uses that that. And I remember somebody. And and by the way, I know we have a huge following. Both you and I are members of the uh, Lorenzo Paralysis Group. Our our. I'm there, you know, because I had a gulp dog. So, um, so I'm there for the support. And a lot of them will have this, you know, weak in the back and then they'll have that proprioception deficit, like, like you were saying. But one, one person I heard was that their dog, when they laid on the ground, their legs, you know, went out back and it was, they had the toe grips on and just them trying to get up off that lane for, you know, frog position, it helped them when their foot was upside down to help get up. And I'm like, oh, um, so, oh, Susie Gray, by the way, adopted a senior dog. So thank you, Susie Gray, for adopting oldies. Um, but now what about the scuffing? Because this is Sam's issue and that's helpful for that, right? Yes. So degenerative myelopathy, gulp, these kind of conditions that, you know, there's a bunch that can cause it. If, if it's early enough, toe grips can be really cool, not only for traction, but also because they are, they're sparing to the nail. 
So yeah. they, will, they will have to be glued on. But then instead of the dog wearing the tips of their nails down to little bloody stumps, they're actually wearing away the toe grips. And I see that in my practice and it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, the other thing is they, they provide proprioceptive stimulus. So they actually, and I don't know how it is, but they, they draw, somehow they draw the brain's attention to the paws in such a subtle, subtle way because they're not invasive. They're not covering over the whole paw like boots and socks. And I love boots and socks for certain uses, yeah. but not for dogs that are frail and already struggling with breakover. So I remember years ago reading the report of the Pentagon after 911, and the senior vet there who took care of the dog said, those dogs who are going on the pile, they're not wearing boots or socks unless they have an injury, but to just, just to do the job, they're not, because they need every ounce of their proprioceptive ability. And it's true, when we put boots and socks over these paws and these dogs that are struggling already, we obliterate a lot of that proprioception because so much of it is coming from receptors and the, the, the toes and the nails. It's a huge, it's a huge concentration there. And so toe grips don't affect that at all, but whether it be weight or a little bit of pressure, I don't know, it does kind of draw the brain's attention and seems to help them. That I, you know, I never thought of that because I'll talk to people about putting um, uh, like hair ties on the bottom, like, and and it's good because it just is some attention there, and it's especially for the neuropathy dogs, right? So, which is what I've got right now. Um, and so, you know, I'm gonna I'm throwing myself under the bus. So Sam, right? It's a girl, and so she's doing that, and and uh, you know, I didn't know what it was. Not like I said, it's spinal lymphoma, but her two middle toes that were dragging so much are were were bloody stubs and now they're just little stumps right so they're not long enough yet to get them back on but once i get once they're long enough i'm going to get them back on and i'm going to put it on the other you know two yeah the, two. Outer, the outer two that are still good because those inner ones because it's, it's really it's really tough now i've got a couple questions first off rich let's just take my money in all caps i love rich you know he's here now what about marcella says so you remove them when you have to trim their nails and put on a new set, question mark. Yes, so if they're applied in the traditional way, um, you can just remove them, you can trim the nails and you can reapply them. And when you do, you're inherently gonna kind of put them on in a different place for the grip zone. So it's like rotating car tires and they last longer that way and it's fine. However, if you are gluing them, it becomes a one use product because when you take them off from being glued, you sort of just kind of peel them off the nails and so yeah. you can't reuse them. So unfortunately that you can't reuse the product at that point, but typically those uh, dogs are so helped by the toe grips that people are like, oh, you know, that's fine. I'll, you know, once a month or however long they're gonna be changing them. And I if I can mention how long they last, can I talk about that quickly? Yes, yes. So the average dog, they last, I'm gonna give the range of one to three months. For a dog who's really sound gated and just needs them for traction, like I have a golden, the dog slips on their hardwood stairs, but the dog doesn't really have any, no neuropathy, really no lameness, just slips on the stairs. That dog goes four to six months in a set of toe grips, which blows my mind. Right. But she just, she uses herself very correctly. For a dog that has specifically a neuropathy or any sort of an issue where they're using them so hard like a crutch, then you see more wear and you only might get a month out of them. But again, those are the dogs that they seem to be helping the most. And yeah. I would say average is just so average of all dogs using them, I would say is like two, two and a half months. Oh, that's actually better than I thought. Now, Lynn asks in Arizona, she's got a lot of stones and concrete in her yard, right? So do they hold up pretty good there in, you know, walking outside? Probably it's just a concrete might be worse than the stones, but. Right. I mean, the, if it's stones where the dog sort of like the, the nails are going in between the stones, that might tend to yank the toe grips off. I'm not sure. But what mm -hmm. I would say is try them. We, we want people to try them and we offer a 30 day money back guarantee. Like our customer service team is the best in the country. I swear by it and I stand behind it and we will take care of you. We are not we are just here to help as many dogs as possible. So if you think like, well, my dog might be a good candidate. Try them. We have free shipping. And worst case scenario, you just have to take advantage of the refunds. There you go, Lynn. Try them out. I love it. Okay, so Pat's got an old doxy that's a wobbly, wobbly walker. These would be great. 
And uh, Tina Marie's got a min pin that's afraid to walk on the hardwood floor and tile floors. Will these help? Yes. So that's another awesome. That's another off-label use. So we have a ton of greyhounds. That seems to be a big issue for them that use them. And we've actually, this is kind of cool. And I know this because they were owned by veterinarians. So I, I had closer to feedback and communication with them. I think probably several dozen dogs have used it just for the fear factor. But I know of at least two dogs who use toe grips. This is so cool. And they were able to rehab through their fear slowly take off the number of toe grips and like go on to not be toe grips users. They, and that's really exciting to me. Oh, for sure. Julie, this is so cool. I, like, listen, I knew about you and we were, you know, friends because now we've seen each other in conferences and we've stalked each other, you know, enough. Uh, <laughs> but I love this, this backstory. It's so interesting. Now, about how much do they cost? Um, they cost $34.99. Unless, awesome. unless you buy them on a subscription. So you can, on our site, you can say like, okay, and ship them to me every two months. And then they're 29 something. Easy peasy. Listen, Tiffany says, beat me to the punch with the greyhounds. She's in. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so um, anything else cool that you could think of that I did not mention in my interview, interview skills? Well, I mean, it really comes down to the stories. That's why I love doing this so much is these, like if you go to our website, toegrips.com and click on shop now and then click on toe grips. Um, I, we have had so many websites over the years and I didn't realize the value of saving these testimonials. So our latest website, we finally got our act together and we're saving these testimonials and we have like 500. But their stories are so, like, nobody just writes, oh, this is a good product. You know, it's not like Amazon, like, five stars, this works. They tell their dog's whole story. And it's so meaningful, like, so meaningful to, to see that when you affect a dog's life, and I think this is why many of us became veterinarians, it's not just the joy of working with that dog, but you also have direct impact on the quality of life for their human. So one of my favorite stories is um, a dog who lived in Israel. And this was years ago when Israel was getting a lot of rockets. Um, you know, the terrorists were shooting rockets over and the dog couldn't run into the safe room in the house. And so they only, oh, they only had seconds to get into the safe room. And so he wrote me a story and he said, you know, I wanted, this was very early on. So I actually was doing my own customer service emails at the time. So I had a lot of communication with him. And um, he said, you know, now my, my, I can't remember the dog's name, a little white spitz, but she's like, now my dog, like when we're all running, the dog used to scuffle and couldn't get up and make it in time. And I think he probably did what he could to help the dog get there and risk his own life anywhere. They had, they had like four seconds when the alarms went off, but with toe grips, the dog could safely run to the safe room in the house herself. So that, I mean, talk about having impact that, that story has always right. stuck with me. Oh my gosh. And for anybody who's watching this and thinking about getting it, like we would love to hear those stories. So even, even myself, I want to, I want to hear it. Cause you know, it's, it's nice to see that we, that we're helpful and, and look, there's a lot of people who don't know about them and it's nice to see some, some people saying that they're going to try it. And, and you've got so many different sizes, like there's how many, you know how Seven. many sizes you got? Seven. Okay. I knew you'd know that. How many people now that you've got working in like support? This is such a great story because, you know, it just started with my family in our kitchen. Um, so we have, I don't know, around 16 employees now. What? And it's all of them. This is, I'm so thankful for them. All of them truly love our customers and the dogs that use toe grips like I do. Like there's nobody who's just here collecting a paycheck. Like these people care so much. And um, all of them also, are people that by being employed through our little small business are able to either, you know, st be stay at home moms or single moms. You know, there, there's a story behind everybody and it's, they are a huge blessing to me and I pray that we're a blessing to them. So thank you for your business, oh. your small business. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, James got a quick, quick question. Do they stretch out? Yes. Yeah, so theoretically, no. I mean, the material has yeah. a lot of elasticity. I will say over the many years we've been doing this, we've had a few customer service tickets where people said, you know, I was taking off, I was trimming, reapplying and doing that over a certain pretty long amount of time. And then it seemed like towards the end, they were starting to stretch out. So I've, I have read customer service, things like that. 
you know, a handful of times or less. But the vast majority of people, I've never heard that and I've not experienced that in my own practice. They, they maintain their, their shape and their elasticity and stay attached to the nail. I, 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 yeah, I've seen that. Like it's, it's pretty consistent. And, uh, and again, there's sizing information on the website, like a ton of it, ton of information on your website. And I want to also touch on an ebook that you made. So yeah. tell me about that. I mean, I hate to be excited about it cause it's a terrible topic, but I, this sounds You're so in good good. Company. It's a hard topic, but in, I feel like in my entire 23 year veterinary career, like this book is one of the things I'm most proud of because it started with the idea from some blogs written on the topic of saying goodbye to your dog and reading the comments from people on those blogs. I realized that I did not understand the level of emotion, of course, in a euthanasia appointment, and this is your area of expertise. We try to really answer people's questions and help them address w without fear because i think when we don't understand things it's easier to be more fearful so to just be very honest and gentle about the process and give the dog and the family the gift of this very gentle peaceful send-off but i didn't realize that many people have not had that experience and they carry potentially years of guilt from that and have these questions and like really it's very traumatic and so I took some blogs and then some other ideas and answers around this concept and wrote this book. Basically, it's how to say goodbye to your dog from first knowing the signs that it's time, then moving through the appointment um, itself and what like nitty gritty, what to expect in the process of death. And then ending with my own personal story of a home euthanasia of our dog a couple years ago. And so this is something that I'm really proud to have been able to put together because I hope, again, it affects many lives lives for the better. And it's not something I would feel comfortable charging for. So it's a free resource on our website. That's so good. And we put it in the comments. The link was too big to put in my little purple bar there, but we put it in the comments. So the link is there to your to the ebook about how to say goodbye free from Dr. Busby. Um, listen, I've got another great question here. <laughs> Jane says, my lab won't stay still. Well, you have a lab, Jane, so there you go. Um, do vets apply them? Great question, Jane. So many of our customers, I mean, the vast majority of our business is selling directly to customers. But if for whatever reason, I mean, we've had people who were in wheelchairs or people who just didn't feel like their dogs would cooperate. For whatever reason, um, if you don't aren't able to put on the toe grips yourself, then yes, we have on our website in the footer, the find a retailer page. Sorry, oh. we have a, we have on our website in the footer a find a retailer page, and you can use your zip code to find a vet near you who carries toe grips and applies them. And oh. I, would, I would love for all of you to tell your vet to carry toe that. grips. We wholesale toe grips to vets. Okay, so this is what I wanted to actually say. So even if your vet doesn't, because, as, as amazing as I think it is, not all vets know about this, the toe grips, right? Just like not all vets know about lap of love. So if you find us, you know, tell your vet, but, but you could um, buy them and, and talk to your vet and tell them about it because imagine then the ripple effect. So the next, you know, wobbly dog that they have, they'll know about them and, and know how to, you know, apply them. But, but, you know, nurses and technicians at clinics know how to do some help, help the little, the, that won't stay still guys. Now, another, another question, Miriam, uh, and I think I can answer this one. So um, it's her dogs, uh, you know, the legs are sliding out, especially on the tile floors, especially in the morning, but walking outside isn't an issue. Do you keep the toe grips on the whole time or just when they're slipping? Keep them on the whole time. You just, right. it's not, a, it's not an easy, because they're not hard to put on. I want to make sure people realize this. They're not difficult to put on. Unless like Jane, you got a, a you know, a squirrely dog. But there's, it's not something like socks where you could just put them on and off really easy. Just leave them on. Right. And that's the beauty of it is they're designed for, we say, like semi-continuous long-term use. We did have one lady in Kansas City. Her, yeah. dog was, her, dog, her, dog, her dog was a therapy dog. And so she lived on carpets at home, but she went every day to school with the, with the lady. And so this lady did put, on, put them on every morning and take them off every evening because she – you know, once you get past the learning curve, they are simple to do. And that's, that worked yeah. for her. Um, that dog's name is Callie. And actually on our YouTube channel, Toe Grips, if you type in Callie, C-A-L-I, 
you can see a really cool before and after of this dog on these slippery floors at the school and then her sort of figuring out that she has traction she she made me this video set to music and also that dog has shorter nails and you can see her engaging the paws to use the toe grips i love it i'm gonna go check out all these videos i love it all right anything else i forgot i just want to thank you you mentioned the book and in the book i speak often and with great love and affection for lap of love because that service that you provide and for lack of a better term have main, made mainstream i mean before i think there were always veterinarians who recognize the value and the importance of that and went out of their way to do it. It's just hard with a with a full schedule to get out and be on the road as a small animal yeah. vet. Um, but you have made a way for that to be accessible, I think, to so many people. And I'm sure hopefully you're all, throughout the entire world one day. But I want to thank you for that because that's an invaluable last gift that we give. We have, thank you. We have an amazing team of vets and care coordinators that answer the phones and and families are like we have the best families just like you got you do too right and um and so i just got a few more questions uh gillis she's, she's worried about them chewing them off every day i try them like dr julie says you know you can get even it's so know, rare so rare so rare do they go on the back and the front both right um uh, my groomer says to use them and then marnie hold on go back up my friend marnie who i've known before I became a vet and uh, worked with her at the Humane Society, I have a dog training company and deal with aging dogs. Do you have brochures that she can send and give my students to my students and clients? So she should just email it like the website, yeah. somebody on the website. So Marnie, that's awesome. Thank you. Help at toegrips.com. Just write and request brochures. We will send you brochures. We will send you a brochure holder. We will send you an I Love My Senior Dog sticker. Just tell us what you need. <laughs> I love it. I want one of those stickers. I love them. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, listen, I got, you know, I think I probably went over time and took up more time that I promised I would only take out of your busy day. I am uh, so in awe of, of you for a few reasons. One, as a veterinarian and coming, you know, coming up and, and, and being entrepreneurial with this, right? We have so many ideas and sometimes we're just like, oh, I don't want to do it, right? And it's just, just a lot of work. And you know what? You went for it. You're helping my favorite breed, the weak and the wobblies, right? And even the young ones, like we said, with some with some with some issues and and just being so kind and lovely as a professional and, and person. So um, and to our, our LARPAR group. Woo, shout out. <laughs> shout out to our LARPAR group. Um, and so he said, only for senior dogs. No, sorry, Lisa. It's any dog that has an issue, right? Because we could have a dachshund with a back issue, any any dogs that's that's slipping and sliding or you know having these issues and it just so happens that our, a lot of our older dogs will have these neuropathies and arthritis and things like that so senior, senior and special needs is what we say tm <laughs> i love it okay so i'm, I'm doing a bad job at, at showing my little my little purple bars that come across the thing but i want to thank you again and if anybody has any questions just go to your website tons of videos and all good stuff so everybody, uh, thank you for tuning in, watching, and you know, remember to love up on those gray muzzles. Woohoo! Thank you so much, everybody. Right, thank you, Dr. Julie. Thank Take you. Take care.